This, what I thought was the end, is not. It's the Rogues number three. It's written by Joshua Williamson with art by Leo Max, not Leo Sayer. Eric Leo Max. Jason Wordy. Jason, me, <laughs> and you. Me you know. got it. It's just for you. And Hassan Atsame El Hua, who's a letter in a lot of books. And in one of the books, I think it was over at Marvel, maybe, or whatever it was, it that uh, was said that he is a rock star letter. A rock star he was, Eric. And we continue. This rogues book, and I do like it. It's one of those just side deals. It's a black issue. labeled, and yeah, you, you pick it up where you end up seeing. And, and in this, I don't know if everybody thought that everybody was going to get out alive here. It wasn't going to happen, and people are starting to die left and right. But I do like the reactions of that, and I like that in this you have that inside deal. You also mentioned Gorilla Grim that we see full out here, which I thought was pretty cool. But Sam, I mean, he's there. And he wants Grodd dead. All the shit and crap that Grodd has done to him, he wants him dead. He wants to end up, you know, doing stuff. Good. And you, you find out it's also probably to do with the idea. It's just this drug empire, all this stuff that he's kind of tainted. <laughs> Gorilla City. City for all the, like, you know, the technological marvel that it is, for all the gold that they're sitting on. When we found out like 10 years ago at the beginning of the story, it's like Grodd only cares about power. He has all this gold he's sitting on because he doesn't care about monetary wealth. He just cares about the power he has. So it just sits there like he's a fucking smaug, a dragon sitting on his gold hoard. And now the idea is like, oh, no, they got all that shit because they sell smack. Oh, all right. And and the thing is, it's, it's you know, it's Grodd. He's a villain. I think that the idea of that should be a little more like, oh, my it's God. It's such look a weird idea. We're, we're in the future, though. But Gorilla City comes off as a 1970s New York City. And even the idea where Grodd is the king of Gorilla City he honestly just comes off as kingpin to me from like the Daredevil TV show where he just keeps yelling about Vanessa and stuff like that. Because even when his wife is here, and, like, you know, when she showed up last issue with his baby and like, you know, before he had to act like Grodd, you know, and he's now he's he's apologizing almost like kingpin would to Vanessa. Like, like, you know, I didn't want Vanessa to see me like this. You know, he's like, I'm sorry. You know, I have to do this. I love you and my son so much. But he really just comes off as almost like Vincent D'Onofrio. And uh, as Kingpin in this whole thing, it's so funny to me. It's like, it still bothers me the way that Gorilla City is portrayed because I just wanted something different than a weird 1970s New York vibe. But it, it's kind of funny. Like everything feels like that except for that that freaking Fort Knox bank that has all the gold. Everything, that's a technological marvel of freaking ape robots. But the rest of it, everybody's just dressed like an asshole from the 1970s. Yeah, like, and it's almost even that tie in, you know, you the, hey, they're the mob. You know, you have this deal. Yeah. Hey, what's going on? I didn't think that it was. The, the best thing where you end up having uh, Grodd say that he didn't want to like, oh, I could I wish I would have spent more time with my kid in front of Grimm. I thought that that was a little bit of like showing a little weakness there, but it was fine. I also don't like seeing gorillas smoking, Eric. I'm against that. I just want to go on the record that gorillas shouldn't smoke. But you end up through this. They should shoot where, up. Yeah, exactly. It's funny because, again, because of this book and it's, you know, this black label, awful thing. But this would be, in my mind, the equivalent almost of where you find out like and maybe Black Panther doesn't even know. But you find out that vibranium mound it's actually meth, Eric, the whole time and all that, because you end up wanting to have all this technological stuff there and why they're away. And, yeah, they're just drug suppliers and they they end up <laughs> even having humans. And it even there seems doing like the it. idea that all the human slaves that we saw and talked about previously, just a little bit, the idea that people come in here to work because they owe a debt to Grodd and you have to work it off, stuff like that. They're just essentially standing around in their underwear now in gas mask and just on assembly They're line, the line for smack. assembly line. <laughs> no, that's the meth, that's the heroin, that's the H, and that's the K. Right? The K. You end up where... Special I, K, I got you. And I do like Ketamine. this. Oh, Special K. I thought you meant uh, Special G. That's a cereal. No, that's oh, Special okay. G. You end up where the whole play is. Everybody's Respawn using each back. other as they end up doing in these things. And even the rogues, they are afraid. You know, the ones that really dealt with well, Snart, that they be. think that he's going to sell them out, even though he's not really here, but he is, but he isn't. He's just not telling them the whole plan because it gets bigger when you end up having Sam say, yeah, I'll tell you the way to go in out here, but you got to kill Grodd. That ends up upping the ante and nobody would have been involved probably if they knew that. At first, and again, what are you going to do? You break into a floor. Honestly, the killing Grodd is the easiest part about all of this because, like, Sam Simeon's coming in here. He realizes what Leonard Snart wants to do is stealing all this stuff. And, like, look, I will, t I freaking help build this whole thing. I laid the blueprints for this stuff. There's only one way in and out. You do all of this, and then you make sure that you get in before any of this happens. I'll make sure that the alarms don't trip. I just need you to kill Grodd because he's a bit of a jerk, a dickhole to me. He's my grandfather. I fucking hate his guts. So, let's just kill this freaking ape for me. 
And I'm like, okay, that works. And I just think that is the easiest part of the plan because Grodd is going to show up or like we can do whatever thing, especially if we have Evan freaking, you know, mirror gun. Let's just freaking, you know, open a portal in Grodd's bathroom mirror, shoot him in the face with a freaking cold gun and days I over. Know. Let's go take our gold bricks. True. But the biggest problem of this story is when we get in there, we're have like, you know, we have a whole crew of badass rogue members for the future and Bronze Tiger for some reasons here. It doesn't, I don't know why, but he's here. We are taking out ape guards left and right. Everybody has their job to do. You know, hey, Evan, open up a mirror portal. We got all these gold bricks to do. And I'm just sitting there as I'm reading, like, how the fuck are we going to get any of these gold <laughs> bricks where they need to go? I and know. then when they have Magenta use her magnetic powers to take them on, I'm like, gold's not magnetic. What the hell are we doing here? They made it seem less magnetic and more of almost like a force field type deal. That's how I was kind of playing it. At, but it is a little off. The way that he skews that, like, it's a little it weird. But... Like, are we creating a magnetic force field around these to move? Because that's like she does that Listen in order to, to fly. And like, you know, but when they have the whole thing, I'm like, that's one of the biggest problems that I had with like Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. They had all these things where like the, the like gold was going in, like uh, being magnetized by this crystal skull of this alien. I'm like, gold's not my, they even said it in the, in the movie, but they never explained it. Yeah. Again, I mean, that's just so that you end up having Magenta overworked. You end up having that in these stories. Well, not only overworked. But a way to move well, all these gold bricks. Well, she's there, gonna move them, but those fuckers are heavy. How are you gonna do this? And when you do this, you end up having the idea that anything like this, and especially like a mob heist deal, you never trust everybody that you're with. But also, the person or the people who start getting greedy, that's when the plan goes off. And at one point, they could have gotten out of there. They say, "Let's go. We don't need all the gold." And you end up having crazy Get all the start. gold. I want all the gold. And Magenta is having some problems. She's really struggling to do that. She's magne- magnetizing things that can't be magnetized. And then she <laughs> dies. And yeah, that sets off things of even having Mirror Master like, you know, she didn't need to go through that. You ended up using us. You ended up grabbing us because we were vulnerable and we were easy to grab. So screw you. And now the plan is is on the shit. There's a small little bit in a few pages of this when Evan's talking about what he needs to do, because Evan is our uh, McCulloch is our escape, our getaway driver. Essentially, he uses the mirror gun. And the thing is, anybody can just use a mirror gun, but they need Evan because he's done this before to navigate the mirror verse, right? The mirror world and do this. And I love this idea in the background. The reason that Evan is such a heavy drug addict and has been in rehab and just a mess of a human being is because the mirror verse messes with you it is it fucks up your mind and that's why evan is the way it is i love this little bit of the side story and we're not dealing with any of it because evan gets killed right here now and we're not dealing with any of it the thing that i get though is like the, you should have thought this before evan but even then the play before he kind of goes down would have been funny because the gold is in the mirror verse right now it ends up going into that but again these are the sort of things this is like reservoir dogs. he closes so the portal the whole thing of reservoir dogs is the cool thing of getting the idea of the plan but then seeing the plan completely get fucked up and seeing how they react and you have awful people reacting in awful ways where then all of a sudden it is like jesus christ what are we doing here and oh my god i found out that snart ended up making a deal with sam and all of this all and then out of nowhere because they're doing all this and they run into certain people and whatnot you end up having Trickster with this broad son here. Ta-da! With that. And I actually, I, I thought that was funny. It was weird, but he's like, yeah, I thought I could have him. And when you were talking about a heist movie, and you're waiting for just the idea of that thing, that, that bad thing to happen where this plan starts falling apart and it's dominoes is dropping left and right for just the worst thing possible to happen because you have everyone doing their jobs. You have half the rogues creating a distraction in the main bank part of the building where, like, you know, heat wave is burning some people freaking, you know, and we're just making fire everywhere. Bronze Tigers beating the shit out of ape guards and Tricksters is keeping the crowd controlled. But when he sees Gorilla Grodd's, you know, wife and child there, not knowing it's their wife and child and says, he got I'm going to take, right? take me that baby ape because when we get done all this, yes, we're going to be set up for life. And for some reason, the Trickster wants to continue his stage show and he wants himself a talking yeah, ape. Yeah, he wants a talking and, ape. He thought and that as was great. I see this go down, as I see him interacting where, you know, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's just uh, get down on the ground, relax, whatever. But he's talking to Gorilla Grodd's wife and child. And then when you see later on that he has my, you just doomed everybody. Everybody here is going to die because of what you just did right here and now, Trickster. You have Gorilla Grodd's child, the goddamn prince of Gorilla City. You were all fucked. Congratulations. And Trickster's killed right here. Oh, yeah. One of the funniest thing, though, is at the beginning when you end up having the toy monkey. 
I love when they end up this like what is this racist like, piece of shit? I love that thing goes like, man, this is really offensive shit. Like when he looks at that made me laugh so much. Like how it played that deal and how you're playing you know the with the are brought that. He's just making oh, yeah. bad choices left Again, and right. that's what I'm saying. You didn't need like the one thing. He's like, oh, distracting with this. But I'm telling like, you, when it's a shit gorilla. falls apart completely, like the gold is in the mirror verse. Freaking no magenta's dead. Freaking Evan is dead. The freaking mirror gun is left behind, and like you know, Snart has to get out of there. When he can gets the back together with you know, Golden Glider and uh, and Bronze Tiger and Heat Wave and stuff like that, and Trickster. When you have everything that's falling around there, and then Trickster pulls his bullshit of stealing this goddamn ape, and this like Lisa Snart, like a Golden Glider, loses her mind to the point where she slits his fucking throat with her goddamn Brutal. ice skates. I'm like, yeah, the, everything is just over now. Everything, there is no coming back from this, and I'm sad to say that I can't see any happy ending for any member of the rogues this fucking time around. And I, I would hope that, again, I think that the play here is, you're right, and up until that point- You don't need shades, because this future is not bright for fucking Leonard Snart and his crew. Lisa had been pretty good, pretty, now she just, sli- even if it's Trickster, she just sliced his neck, and she goes, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Like, even before that, it was kind of cool to see her go and- and use the skates and get by the the robot gorillas and do yeah. the on the keypad it was really neat the way that they played that out. And I actually saw people not liking the art. I liked it because it it's was okay. so it's not my thing. I thought it was cool because it was so like kinetic at at points where shit is going down and going awful, and you get that feeling even from the art. It's very exciting looking, if I would say. But when she slices Trickster's throat, I'm like. What the hell is going on here? The House of Cards is falling. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, it's done and it's bloody. He ends up like, hey, look at this monkey. I'm going to use a Heat no, Wave no, no. is shot at this point and bleeding out. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's in trouble. And it's funny. At one point when Heat Wave goes and says, hey, uh, you know, Snark, can you use my gun and cauterize the wound? I thought at first he was saying that about Trickster. I'm like, don't bother. He is done. <laughs> and he, oh, just, imagine, just imagine the mindset <laughs> of some lunatic like, hey. I think he's pretty bad <laughs> offer there. I need you to take this flamethrower and cauterize his throat. Yeah, to his jugular. Now, I, I just want so I actually want a character who's so out of touch that you would actually have to oh, that be, be a Oh, that'd be hilarious. Thing. So with that, you also end up having- I think it's going to work, buddy. Sam oh, okay. Simeon, he knew the way in. He wanted to get rid of Grodd. He's pissed off. But in the meantime, Grim, Gorilla Grim- The right-hand man of Grodd. Yeah, and he's kind of like the police chief. Right he's kind of like, ape. yeah, yeah, ape. Head of security. And head of security. Kind of plays off like that enforcer in a mob deal so he's kind of going around he's got his jacket and shit on right well, that's the thing is right now if you want to call it if Grodd's the emperor fucking grim is darth vader yeah and he goes and the problem is sam was on the up and up but the grim had done something besides that well, grim made a back door that they didn't tell sam about you know and, and he says uh, you know and that's he didn't trust him fully and like hey i oh i forgot to tell you that oh my goodness so all the plan is coming down around them and they are freaking out and they're trying to figure it out at that point snart even says you know hey sam's here and sam goes i thought it was just going to be you that was going to be here we're going to do this like you sold this out everybody's pissed and then they end up running and run into full out meth lab and that is like holy shit i like that they're in that like observation deck just like what the fuck did we get involved with look at this shit and now that kind of you know, changes things a Everything's bit. Everything's just well. bad news bears yeah. at this point yeah, in time. And that's because when all hell breaks because loose. Because even the idea, let's just let's just consider this a mob situation, or even the idea, let's some backwoods fucking marijuana growers back in the day when weed was totally legal, uh, illegal everywhere. But the idea, let's say we have these assholes here. Yes, they're trying to steal from us, but also they have all this information that could bring us down. And now you can't leave here alive with what you've seen and done. And now the only thing that's going to keep them alive. Is Trickster's bullshit because Leonard Snart, his fucking Hail Mary at this point in time is like, we have the baby boy of Gorilla Grodd. We're going to negotiate our way out of here or his son's going to get it. And the big play of this is because they're like, they don't have the mirror gun either. That's left no. behind. Mirror Master. And Grodd there. has it now. Yeah. And Mirror Master wasn't, he's gone. So he can't na- na- uh, navigate the deal. So at the one point they're like, so we're here now and we're not getting shit. Like now they're fighting for their lives to get out. And we're not even going to get anything from this. And even at that point where you end up awful snort where he grabs the baby, we're going to negotiate. And he's like, all right. And like, hey, you, you screwed up. Everything has gone to hell here. And even the idea hell that Sam Park. might be in trouble, all these things going down. Look, if I'm Sam, I'm getting the fuck out of there. I don't want to associate with any of these assholes. Yeah, I'm out. I'm on a plane. I'm, I'm out going of back to my office. I'm going to sit in my chair, lean back and drink until my woes go I'm away. Going where bananas, these fuckers are dead. I peel out, get out of there. 
Uh, but I did like it. Split, Jim. I, <laughs> yeah, you will make like a banana and leave. And split. You end up at the end, like you were down more than I was on the last issue, but it was that kind of, you know, middle deal. You, you kind of lay in the plan well, down. Just the this track is to the City was boring as shit. I wasn't that excited to get to this issue because of that last one. Like, okay, we'll see. I actually want to. Now, now I'm excited for the, the last issue to see how this. I just have to see how awful it ends and oh, who too. might end up living, dying, whatever. Yeah, this is fun. The biggest, the biggest yeah, problem I had was Magenta moving fucking gold because that's not in her power set. And you could tell me how it works a different way or this. It just really threw me off for what it we're doing. It is the idea. Was, it seems Elseworlds kind of DLC, but you don't play it that way. That's the problem. This is I'm just, with you. Uh, this is a lot more fun than the previous issue, seeing how the House of Cards is falling for everything that was set up, even when it seemed like you had a foolproof plan. So at the end of the day, even like, you know, with that, I'm not a huge fan of the art, but it works for what it's doing, but I'm giving a 7.8 out of 10. Yeah, I'm going to give it an 8. I, I actually really liked it. I like the art. I like the style. I thought, you know, it was kind of cool and very emotional, very, like I said, kinetic, exciting with what the story was and even has like kind of an old school kind of look as well 